I think a lot of people, sometimes there are some things that, if I'm speaking to people that are already married, that God will use that thing mm -hmm. to develop your prayer life, uh, to develop your ability to trust God. You know, some of the things that we talk to people about, and I hear you on the phone uh, a lot of times, uh, you'll, you'll say to someone, you're, uh, you're just going to have to leave that in God's hands. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to trust God with that. Yeah, there are, um, I feel like there are too many people who put all of their everything into their spouse and God is still first. And we have to remember that God is first and then the marriage, you know, comes after that relationship. And so when you don't have that in order and you're putting everything, putting all your trust and everything into that, then um, when situations come up, it's like you have nowhere to go because God is not first. And this is such important, such an important topic that we talk about it some more because instead of going on to the next point, because um, I, I have learned that there's some things that you could try to change by putting your hands on mm -hmm. that actually is in the domain of God. Mm -hmm. You know, God knows that person's thoughts, that person's how they perceive things. He knows their history. He knows their future. He knows their desires. He, he can talk to them in a language yes. that you can't. Yes. And so that is so important, the wisdom that God has given you in regards to uh, when it gets to that place, this person's frustrated. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And then the person that they're talking about is primarily a good person. I mean, you, if you ask the person, they would tell you, yeah, yeah, at, 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 the, at the core mm -hmm. and as a person, they're a good person. But this, and we've been talking about it, arguing about it. We go back and forth about it. Nothing's changed. And I don't know, da, 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 da. And then, hey, do you know what? You've done everything that you can. Turn them over to God. Mm -hmm. Turn them over to God. And yeah, that thing about God speaking to um, the spouse in a way that the spouse cannot speak to their spouse is so true. He'll and, speak their language. Your prayer, um, your time in prayer becomes more enriched when you're dealing with a situation. Not that we want to deal with problems, but problems do come up in life and um, you can't just quit because these problems come up. And I, and I guarantee you, you will grow spiritually. Yes. Uh, in, and in your relationship with God through this process. This is why it's so, it's so dangerous to quit yeah. on things because God uses the incubator of marriage to often develop the man or woman of God that he knows that person uh, can be. Mm. You know, you you will develop you will develop long suffering, you will de develop patience, you will develop the ability the ability to love when you don't feel love. You will you will develop the ability to to gain peace or to, or, or to take peace mm. when there's no objective um, reason for it. To have joy, um, just in the fact that you know having. Um, uh, that relationship with God and, and knowing that, you know, he's there for you. James has counted all joy when you enter into these various trials. What? Knowing uh, that it works with patience and patience when it has performed its perfect work uh, causes you to want nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's Maturity. a... Maturity. Yes, yes, so that when you're mature, it says that when you're perfect. Mm -hmm. When you're mature, you will want nothing. So just think about a lot of times um, these issues are actually incubators for your maturation and your growth mm -hmm. uh, with God, developing a deeper a relationship with him. So uh, oftentimes that, that 10 to 20% is a, simply a lack of change mm -hmm. in some area while, while not focusing on all of these other things that are, that are right. Um, what's the next one, baby? Um, number three is um, something of high importance or value to the spouse is unrealized or appreciated. Yeah, so this can be caused by an unwillingness or even an inability to meet the needs, uh, meet meet that need. Gina talked about sometimes the person doesn't have the ability. Um, th you know that that's something that you 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 have to 
communicate to the other person that this is a, a need that you have. Again, um, all of these other things may be well, but if you have this, this unarticulated or communicated need that's mm -hmm. not being met, it will consume and color Everything the else. rest of the rest of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Nothing will satisfy you if this thing that you have a need in is so important to you that it's not being addressed, it's not being watered, mm -hmm. it's not being paid attention to. That could the the enemy will use that to cause um, uh, unknowingly to the person, to your spouse, their words, their actions, or lack thereof to mean something totally different. Yeah. You know, this person is insensitive. Um, this person doesn't appreciate me. When your issue is, is that maybe you have the need to be told thank you right. when you do certain things. Maybe you do certain things around the house um, that you don't, you know, basically ring a bell about. Right. But you would really like for somebody to recognize, you know, the bed don't get made by yeah, itself. So, yeah. You know, your dinner doesn't just drop out of the sky, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the house is not a mess simply because we got, you know, angels that come in here and do it. Mm -hmm. No, I do that. You know, if that, you know, if that's the case and the person that you're dealing with may not come from a home or a, in an environment where they express themselves, mm -hmm. you know, in, a, in a certain way, but maybe you come from a, 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 a home, where that was the case, mm -hmm. you know. Where you might consider that just being mannerly or um, yeah, just common sense. But that's not the case for your spouse because they came from a different environment. You know, one of the things that I that I, I try to always do, and my wife can attest to, even if I get up and I've said it and I don't remember I said it, I say after she's um, after we've eaten dinner, I'll say thank you, baby. And then if I forget that I said it, I'll actually ask her again, did I tell you thank you? Mm -hmm. And I do that in front of our kids mm -hmm. because yeah. I want them to, I, I want them to recognize that articulating appreciation yes. is something that, that, that is, is not necessarily a demanded by people, but it's appreciated. Yeah. It, it, it allows them to know that I'm not taking this for granted. Right. That this is not something that I think doesn't take effort or didn't take any energy on your part. You you literally have to think about what is it that we, we're going to eat today? What time? When does it need to be done? Da da da. So on and so forth. So many different things that a person has to do for that event for the family to sit down and eat. Somebody needs to say thank you. Mm. Somebody needs to. And I'm 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 saying find a way that you can do it that the other person understands that you are recognizing what they do, what they are doing. It doesn't have to be the same way that I do it. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that is extremely important. And um, just speaking from my background, um, how I grew up, there was a lack of appreciation for those things. And what it caused was a bitterness towards doing those things. And, that is not a place that anyone wants to be. Now watch this. The person is doing them out of love, uh, honor or respect of the spouse, but is not being, there's no reciprocation of appreciation, mm -hmm. so the person stops doing it. Mm -hmm. Now the, the spouse who was receiving it thinks of the person who stopped doing it as being selfish or they don't appreciate what they're doing. Mm -hmm for the home. And, and, and so you, you, you have this situation where there's simply a lack of uh, communication, mm -hmm. of appreciation. Appreciation, yes. Of, of showing appreciation. These are small things, but like I said, it, it will tear up a house mm -hmm. if, it, if it's allowed to manifest. Like Gina says, once bitterness uh, sets in, yes. the root of bitterness sets in and offense, oh, you, uh, you got a real problem. Yeah. You do. Because now you get to the situation where we were talking about earlier where people could be having conversations and even acknowledge all of these other good good things, but because they're offended, they can't see them yeah. or they reinterpret them. Yeah. And it, so it totally changes the atmosphere. <laughs> totally. So so you have to find out 
if you have something that's of high value to you that's very important, you have to let it be known that that, that is the case. You know, don't do it in a demanding way, but do it in a way where you uh, approach the situation in, in this manner. Um, the person doesn't know this. Right. You know, don't approach it like you should have known this because mm -hmm. no. No, they don't know. Yeah, approach it as I, I, I need to inform you of this. I want you to know this, mm -hmm. that this is important to me. Right. And see how that person uh, responds. Like I said, there are situations where a person is unwilling. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a whole different issue, and there are issues behind that issue. Right. But we're not going to get into that here. But we just wanted you to recognize that there are situations where there are unmet needs, unarticulated needs that are important to a person that can become, that, 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 that seem small, but if not addressed, can uh, form offense, root of bitterness, and become. Um, very destructive. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the next one, baby? The next Number four. one is comparison with others. My, my, my. Um, Oftentimes, a spouse can become frustrated due to their spouse um, need meeting a certain standard that they perceive that other couples or spouses have obtained. Yeah, so that, which that is, was a... It's such a problem because it's usually so false. Yeah, yeah. So, so it should have said the spouse not meeting a certain standard. Yeah. Before I get into that, I'm gonna have to take a drink because this is something that huh. when you're, it, it's almost like I, I've, I've seen this happen. I've seen couples very happy very you know they well they appear to be happy mm -hmm. and they see another couple that are yes. comparable in age you know in a lot of things that they are comparing themselves to them for some reason and this person that couple seems to be so much further ahead and the person now starts to despise what their spouse is or is not doing right when 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 you really don't know what's going on exactly that in is the other couples that life. is the whole thing about comparison that is such a problem because you don't know the full story in anyone's story um <laughs> what was that movie kingdom come with uh tony braxton and jada pickett in it uh -huh. and uh you you have to see it it's hilarious yeah um but um jada was jealous of um, Tony Braxton in her situation because the guy that she was married to was someone that Jada dated back in the day. She was jealous, but she didn't know the situation was Jack. Yeah, she saw the big house that they were living in. They had all types of money. money. And her husband, um, Jada's husband, was out you know, doing everything he can, hustling, trying to start businesses to prove to her that he loved that her. he loved her and she didn't appreciate it because she had vantage point or she had the ability to see what this other person and this couple was was doing and it looked so grand mm. and tony braxton at the wedding was like do you, the funeral yeah uh at the funeral was like do you know when i lay up in my seven thousand foot a uh, square foot house in my uh, California king size bed. bed and my silk sheets I sit up and I wonder where in the heck is my husband mm -hmm. and Jada was like and she realized Tony was getting her to realize don't allow the appearance yep. to cause you to believe that everything is okay yep. and that is that is the case in every case I always talk to women who are looking at a certain situation and like, oh, I'm like, you don't know their story. You do not know, you what, know what, they, they're going through. what they're going through. You should never be jealous of anybody. In, I'm talking about in the world, no matter what they have, whatever it is you see, because you do not know their story. You do not know what they have gone through or what they're currently going through. Yeah, and there, 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 there are certain intangibles that are not objective that make a marriage. Yes. That you will forfeit the, uh, the intangibles that make a marriage seeking after and causing strife over things that are tangible, yes. money and, and other things 
that don't make a marriage. Yeah. If that were the case, these Hollywood couples would stay married exactly. forever because they got every tangible and material trinket that they could want and more. But very few of those relationships last because of the intangible things that you might have. That's right. You have to value that. You have to, you just have to look at things differently. But one of the things that I always encourage people, don't compare yourself to other people. Your story is different. Every person on earth has a different story. That's the way God made it. And make and focus on making your marriage rich in the intangible things. Yes. Because that serves a foundation for building and acquiring subsequently those tangible things. Mm -hmm. You do it together. Yeah. And I have found that, um, you know, one of the things um, that I noticed when we were, um, when, when we, we had just got just gotten married, and I'm, I'm gonna tell the people a little bit of our story, but um, my when we were coming up, um, I was in law school and I worked at a uh, sort of a law office. It was an alternate dispute resolution company. And my wife worked at one of the leading law firms in the, in the city. She she worked uh, she worked in the office, and coming through there was ball players, millionaires, people in government, people in government, and you know my baby, you know I I knew my baby was fine, my, my baby was beautiful, and I knew that she was going to be coming in contact with people that would approach her that had much more means than I did. Inevitable, because I was broke, I was a law student. She was in a, she 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 was being introduced to and coming in contact with millionaire ball players that were in the paper all the time. What I knew was that she understood what a real marriage was about. Mm -hmm. The intangibles. We had a love for one another that I could trust her mm -hmm. in that environment. If I didn't have that um if if you were the type that was comparing, it would be a problem. And you, this person walks in and you just read in the paper, this person just signed a $20 million contract and those people walk through there, I knew some of them. Um, and here I am, we're living in an apartment and you know, every paycheck, we're trying to figure out how we're gonna turn 10 cents into a dollar. I would, our marriage would have been a mess. Yeah, it would have. Because, um, it, it would have been based on something that was unrealistic mm -hmm. in the sense that she was looking at something that was was a a facade mm -hmm. in the sense and that is so true because I had the advantage of being there and seeing the situations that these people with all this money all these positions all this power were living racked just ridiculously sad lives. They were in divorce situations. That's what I was going to say. Many of them they came to the law firm because they, uh, exactly. they were getting, they were getting, uh, getting a, a divorce. There were so many different situations and, and you just looked and it, it was just really sad. And that's why I say you don't know people's story. You should never compare yourself. You don't know their story. No matter how good it looks on TV or whatever it is that you're looking at, you don't know their story. You cannot compare yourself. So we're saying stop it. Yes. Stop <laughs> the comparison. You don't know that them people <laughs> that are showing you certain things on Facebook, they're only giving you a presentation. Exactly. What they want you to see. Exactly. It all, in many cases, all it will take is just a few questions beyond the obvious, and it becomes obvious that what we are seeing is a presentation, not, exactly. not a reality. Exactly. And so stop the comparison today because it is, it, it, it's a killer of marriages. Okay, what's number five, baby? Number five is sensitivities or insensitivities. A spouse may have a certain sensitivity that the other spouse is insensitive towards that devalues or hurts the other. Now again, a lot of these kind of go together but what I'm specifically talking about here is, is that like when we, we started uh, dating and then we got married because, and, and we've shared this with you before in many of the other programs, there was a manner of communication that was so different between our households that she would talk to me and then I would, 
I would withdraw because I don't want to respond in the way that I was taught to communicate because I knew that that would be harmful to the relationship. But she would ask me, what's wrong? And I'm thinking, you know what's wrong. You know, the way that you talk to me is disrespectful. And she was like, I and didn't. I didn't know. She was like, all I said oh, was this. I said, no, it's the way that you said it. And we, I mean, that thing got to like that. And do you know what happened? I went home with her one day and I witnessed the communication in her parents' house and I went, oh, that's not disrespect. That's just the way that they communicate. Mm -hmm. And then I started to look at it differently and I was like, and I made her aware of that in the sense that, you know, this was said and I saw this said mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have put up with that because that's disrespectful. She was like, really? And I was like, yeah. So we started to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And we took measures to create our own culture and environment in our home that will allow our communication to be authentic between one another. And there's no um, uh, pre-existing baggage that would contaminate our communication. Mm -hmm. um, so, there, there, you know, I was sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was sensitive to that because I was I was I was raised in a in, in a patriot in in, in, in a um, male. A, thank <laughs> you. In, in in a male dominated home where um you know any any inflection in your voice in responding or you know that that was considered as a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so we had to work through that so that um my sensitivities to that and then in turn her sensitivities to the volume or tone of my voice in a sense when I would respond in certain ways uh, you know she would say you sound just like so and so mm -hmm. and I had to stop and said do you know what I actually do and I don't like that mm -hmm. but I didn't know that was just a, a reflex mm -hmm. and so we it was the same for both of right, us so what, what, what I'm saying is is that um, those insi insensitivities brought us to a place where it became so disruptive that we, oftentimes, we were talking about splitting up and all of that type of stuff. And it, and I think about it, that was such a small, small issue that once it was actually talked about, it disappeared. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for um, people who are married or considering marriage to remember that you're coming from two different households. You may be coming from um, totally different cultures um, and you're bringing that together into one household. So you have to consider um, what one person thinks about how you're operating may be totally different than what they're thinking. And so it's very important to have communication to learn how to create the culture for your household, like he was saying yeah. earlier. Some people are very sensitive um, to the volume of a person's voice when they're being spoken to. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't know you wouldn't know that maybe the person is maybe that insecure or sensitive about it that they don't share it with you. But when and other people are sensitive. Uh, with people pointing and, and doing certain things when they're talking or mm -hmm. you just Being have to overly yeah yeah <laughs> uh, overly some some people are offended by All the, that. The, the the drama they call it you know the, the drama that mm -hmm. a person um, has in their communication those sort those sorts of things are are often subtle uh, things that if they're not communicated they can cause a distance in a relationship right. uh, there it can cause a a, 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 a division or a wall that uh, becomes a problem so remember that there are sensitivities and, and and also there can be things that are considered insensitive by your partner that have to be communicated if they are such you know mm -hmm. if, if they are considered insensitive or if you're sensitive about something all right, number six, if you could read that, baby. Alienation of affection. Uh, the lack of showing a, affection, care, or love towards the other spouse. Is the person conscious of this? 
Is this the kind of affection that you desire? What is your spouse's personality? Did they do so previously but no longer do so? And um, when did the affection stop and what was the cause? And are you providing affection? So there's a lot of things there. So the first one is the lack of showing of affection, care, or love towards the other spouse um, or, or the cessation of it. Mm -hmm. So find out why because, again, like we were just talking about, in some families, they're not emotional families. They're not right. affectionate. Um, but I have to, I have to, <laughs> I have to ask the question when somebody says that. I'm like, well, how in the world did you date exactly. the other person and get to the place of them wanting to be wanting married. To, to marry them if you don't have the ability to show affection? That is, um, I, I take that as a huge issue because, like what you said. People do what's necessary to get the spouse that they want. They will go <laughs> to great lengths. To great lengths. So I don't think that it's an inability issue. I think it's an issue of whether or not someone's willing to show affection because it's it's work, and it if it stops, that means there's some issues going on. It's almost like you planting a seed and you, the plant starts to grow and just before it starts to bear fruit, you stop watering it. Yeah. What's going to happen? It's going to die. die.